Coming up on The Local Traveler, we meet a young couple who decided to start their very own family farm to become a part of the local food movement. We roll up our sleeves to help make their delicious granola and spend a day on their farm. Don't miss this sweet episode of The Local Traveler. There is a growing movement towards growing your own food. Civic agriculture is the term used to describe the trend towards locally based agriculture and food production that is tightly linked to a community's social and economic development. This trend recognizes the need to go local and our civic duty to support local agriculture to aid in the economy of our communities. But it's not just for financial health, it's also for the superior nutritional benefits and a more environmentally friendly alternative. Today we get to be farm hands at Sweetgrass Granola in Berea, Kentucky and meet a family who became passionate about reconnecting people with our local food systems. Jacob and Carolyn Gahn realized that our globalized food system was broken and decided to do something about it. Although they met while both attending the University of Kentucky, their careers led them to New York and it was there that they decided they'd had enough of big city life and returned to Kentucky to start a small, sustainable farm where they could grow their own food. It was from that experience and a need for a healthy breakfast alternative that their popular Kentucky Proud small batch handmade granola was born. I'm here today talking with Jacob and Carolyn Gahn and they are the owners of Sweetgrass Foods and Farmstead. We're so happy to be out today. We're happy to have you. This is such a great place. I mean, you come out here and it's so serene and there's the sounds of nature all around you and this must be a great place to live. We love it. It is beautiful to come out, come out here and just look at the valley and the trees and the change of seasons. It's pretty special. Well, and you guys really came out here and started farming with very little past experience. Talk to me about what that was like. Yeah, we have never farmed before until about six years ago, I guess. You know, our family's maybe some distant agricultural connection, <laughs> uh, great, great grandparents or something like everybody else. But uh, for us, it was a totally new experience. And we kind of, we kind of took it slow and worked on other people's properties and farms and, and kind of learned from people who knew what they were doing uh, because it would be even harder if we just jumped in without any clue at all. Uh, so yeah, it's been, it's been a really unique experience just reconnecting with the skill set of agricultural lifestyle. Um, it's a very diverse, you got to do a little bit of everything and so I'm still feeling like I'm way behind, still learning a lot. Yeah, I think the main thing with, that we've learned about farming is that you never stop learning and there's so much, you know, you have to know about the bugs, you have to know about the plants, you know, the animals, it's just, wow, you are all types of veterinarian, biologists, entomologists, I mean, it's like, yeah, never stops. Well, and there's kind of a groundswell, I think, of people who are just like you, feeling like they want that kind of connection back to agriculture and back to just kind of working with their hands and growing their own food and just kind of that civic agriculture. So we uh, worked on uh, some vegetable farms and got our feet wet uh, with that and then we leased some land from friends in Stanford right down the road and that's where we found out more about animals and pastured meats and started to think more about our diet and how eating organically and eating grass-fed meats and you know when we started raising our own milk and chickens then it started to kind of click fully how this plays into our like our personal health you know here we choose to make a lot of chicken broth make lard and things like that right. that uh, you know we didn't grow up doing that and that's what we bring to a lot of our products is that thinking of keeping the ingredients whole mm -hmm. um, and simple and preferably local. Um, so, you know, we don't, you know, we don't use refined sugars, um, just natural sugars, whole sugars, um, all the ingredients, you know, and just minimally processing all of our foods. And, and we think that that's really will make people feel better than a lot of the other alternatives out there that they may be used to that are heavily processed, you know, mass produced and, and I think for a lot of people that a lot of our customers are regular customers, they really do, they come back and they say, it's just so nice to have something that doesn't taste like 
white sugar. You know, right. you know, just that it's just a different flavor. You know, when you start looking at more whole foods, they have a, a richer flavor and, and it makes them feel better. And I think that's important. And we, that, we bring all those lessons from the farm into our products. Sure. You know, and all and all the stuff we do. Well, and I know I've read that you call it an honest product, and that's probably what you're referring to. Is is there aren't a lot of those fillers and a lot of you're not taking shortcuts and it's not this you know huge industrialized approach I mean it's you know this is in your family's house like it's a, you know you've got a commercial kitchen right here and you're putting all that just integrity that you have with the food systems that you're working with and putting that into your product and it's transparent too I mean we're here you know we're, we are open to you know engaging with our customers we are the ones at the farmers markets you know we put ourselves into the product a lot, and so what you, know, what you see is what you get And when it comes to sweetgrass granola or any of our products. So I think that's special too in that, you know, we're accessible, I guess. The Gons live on a farm with a two-story house built by an Amish family. They converted their laundry room into a commercial kitchen, which is where their delicious sweetgrass granola is made. They offer several different varieties that are from stock to spoon, such as Kentucky Harvest, made with sorghum and organic flax seeds, cinnamon cane, made with roasted English walnuts, spicy cinnamon, and organic raisins, cherry home companion, made with Bing cherries and toasted sliced almonds, Germantown chocolate, made with dark cocoa, Kentucky pecans, and organic coconut, and lastly, their new summer seasonal flavor, ginger peach and hemp which is a light blend of ginger, tangy peaches, sweet sorghum, and protein-rich hemp seeds. Making healthy and delicious local granola is not the only thing produced here. When we come back from the break, we get out on the farm and learn more about their brand new healthy snack. It's all coming up after the break. We've been learning more about a one-of-a-kind granola that incorporates the flavors of Kentucky. However, it's not just for breakfast. Lots of customers have found that the granola makes a wonderful ingredient for several different types of recipes. The Gons have been playing around with a few recipes of their own and discovered a new product that was inspired by their children. Sweetgrass Farmstead has always been a family affair and Jacob and Carolyn have happily incorporated their children into farm life as much as possible. So is it as idyllic as it sounds to raise your family on a farm? It's really nice. Uh, it's, I think it's not for everybody, but I think for, you know, if you can do it and you're into it, then it, I think it's gonna turn out really well for us. Hopefully, we, we'll see. You can't judge that until the you know, kids grow up and hopefully they're good people. And yeah, they haven't. They're not old enough to start helping, so that's when it will be really awesome. Oh, yeah. yeah they might um, still end up on their cell phones. You never know, <laughs> but hopefully not. Yeah, I mean, I think, you know, every time we go outside, we do something with uh, with our kids, like, you know, pick berries or move the cows or do something. and. We're, we look at each other and we're like, we never did that when we were little. And, you know, they're just these, like, he's just, they're learning from the beginning. Like, all yeah, these things sponges. that we didn't, yeah. yeah. We didn't get that till we were, you know, 26, started <laughs> that process. So, so that's really awesome. And, I mean, Finn, our son, he's uh, seeing things like goats being born and... Um, yeah, he can understand more about you know, the world, I think, than, I, than we definitely had when we were growing up. So it's, it's so unique to watch him talking about, you know, birth or, and understanding that. Well, and they, they're at least the inspiration for another product and, and more entrepreneurial things happening here. Talk to me about that. Well, it's in the process of being created, I guess. These veggie infused snack bites, they're kind of like snacky energy bites, kind of like truffles that are sweet, you know, flavorful, but they just happen to be made with vegetables, organic vegetables, but you can't really taste them. So we kind of came up with the idea since our kids always wanted to snack, but sometimes didn't want to eat, you know, what they're supposed to eat, you know, as with all kids. Oh, yeah. I think it's, uh, it's just universal. So we wanted to make something that 
you know, we could give them as a snack in between meals or after dinner that, you know, we could say, okay, well, this is okay because there's no sugar added and there's vegetables in it and it's all around healthy and it's, it's good for them. So that was, uh, that's definitely what our goal was for elephants and I think we've, we've really, we've reached that because the kids love them and, you know, they ask and for them and, <laughs> and we're like, all right, I guess you can have the veggie infused snack bite. <laughs> and inside we're like, yes. Yeah, right. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> totally and they're young. they're made with coconut butter as the base, mm. and so it's like substance. You know, it's like a lot of like healthy fats and something that you know isn't just blank calories, mm. um, and it'll keep them like going. They won't be asking for another snack like right away. Which I mean, most snack makers are like, got to get something that they can. Keep buying, eat and eat, right. keep buying. Makes them want more. Yeah. Instead of satiating them. Right. Mm -hmm. But yeah. we're like, no, we want something that will keep them satisfied so we don't have to go through this tantrum again um, <laughs> or something. So, anyway, that, you know, strings back to the whole healthy eating. And I feel like we've taken like what we learned with Sweetgrass in terms of creating a healthful product and just taking it even further. You know, it's. It's gluten-free. It's organic. It's paleo. It's you know, um, you know, it's like free of everything bad. Vegan. <laughs> Vegan, yeah. Now you can start your day with a healthy breakfast by eating sweet grass granola, and keep the good nutrition going all day by snacking on these little veggie delights. Not just for kids, these nutrient-dense spheres of goodness also taste great. But the Gons are not just involved in granola and veggie snacks. They also have a fully operational farm. They raise free-range chickens, grass-finished beef, and dairy goats. They also have a high-tunnel greenhouse to grow mainly spinach and beets, and also grow their very own sorghum. As if that were not enough, they're getting their feet wet in shiitake mushroom production and beekeeping. One day they have plans to start their own CSA to sell directly to consumers. Well, I know you guys have been so successful, really, with what you all have done. I mean, and I commend you for just being like, hey, we want to be part of the solution. We're just going to, we're going to try this. Just jump in and do it. Do you have advice or tips for other people who maybe are listening to this and are like, yes, this is resonating with me. I want to do this. I'm tired of the industrialized food system. I want to be a part of a more agricultural-based system. What would you tell them? Well, not everybody has the opportunity to, you know, have a herd of goats in their backyard. <laughs> but even still, I think there's a lot you can do, even in an urban environment, um, even if it's just raising a garden. I think that's the first step for a lot of people should be just to get back there, till up a little dirt, put some seeds in, and watch something grow and take pride in it. Because I think that's the most important part, and I think that's one of the more um, s stronger emotions. In, on the homestead is the pride you have in the product of your efforts um, when you sit down for dinner and you know for us like now at this point it's you know sometimes 80 to 100 percent of the plate is homegrown and that it feels really good um, even beyond the nutritional aspects um, and the improved flavor of like fresh foods just the pride and take you taking something that you did that you made happen and you nurtured I think that process is important for people to respect food mm -hmm. is to ha is to f have a feeling of what it means to make food. I would also add, you know, if if someone is more serious about about getting into farming, um, you know, Kentucky everywhere needs more farmers. Um, you know, the average age of a farmer is 58 now and uh, so what's going to happen when they all retire. Right. It's kind of scary that we don't have enough people to fill their shoes. So I encourage anyone who's interested to start farming. Um, I, it is difficult, but um, you know, there's so much opportunity, especially in Kentucky. There's, there's so many options of what you can do. You can find your niche. Mm -hmm. and, um, you know, and everyone's so helpful, right? And there's, there's a lot of support. Every time we get together with a group of farmers, we're rejuvenated and we're like, this is, we're doing the right thing here. This is great. <laughs> yeah, try not to get stuck on your own. Too bad if you're, if you're gonna get into it. It's really good to have other people around that, that you can um, rely on. Well, I'm excited to try out farming today. I guess I get to do a few chores maybe around the farm. We have a lot lined up for you. <laughs> okay. Hope you brought your boots. <laughs>
If the idea of civic agriculture and reconnecting with local food systems seems a little daunting at first, the Gone family is proving that with dedication and taking it one step at a time, anything is possible. Make sure and add Sweetgrass Granola and Ellie Finn's Veggie Infused Snacks to your local traveler's list.